This is without doubt the best tutorial on how to build a PC step by step for beginners and I will explain why at the end of the video. Welcome to part 13 of our One PC to Them or challenge series and as you can see I have had a successful post of the new computer which we have assembled outside of the case. So I'm going to show you all about it today. Stay tuned. Let's take it out. Hey Name Tags and welcome, this is Ash from Hillmite Tech. On this channel, we do reviews, repairs and tutorials of tech. And if you want to unleash your true potential, start by subscribing and enable the notification bell icon so I can help you go from newbie to techie. And also please consider using my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. This is the One PC to Rule Them All Challenge series where we're finally going to start assembling the computer. We're trying to do a triple boot operating system, Windows, Linux and Mac OS. And we usually put a poll at the end of the video for you to vote because you can decide every aspect of my next PC build and at the moment we're trying to do daily upload as long as this series will continue. So if you're new to PC building or considering doing a PC build in the near future stick around you may learn a few things or two and if you're an experienced builder feel free to school me and criticize me in the comment section below. Okay come along we're going to do some sort of unboxing. First you want to find a non-static surface to work on please use an anti-risk bracelet. I took out the power supply from the case because I'm going to need it to test and I've plugged it in, but it's switched off. So I'm gonna use this to touch every now and then because I'm not using a bracelet to discharge the static electricity. Now, your motherboard box is a very good surface to work on if you haven't got anything else. In the box, you have the motherboard, some manual and some uh, discs and a couple of data cables and of course the IO shield. You're not gonna need that. Usually you need more updated uh, drivers from the website. This is the MSI B450 Tomahawk. Don't be macho. The manual is quite important, especially as a first time builder. A lot of information. It will avoid you lots of research. Okay. If you don't have a manual with you, you can find it online. Now this is an anti-static uh, bag. The inside is anti-static, not the outside. A mistake that a lot of people make that they will be building on top of it, which is a bad idea because this will cause static outside of it. Before I touch the motherboard, I'm just going to discharge myself and I am going to use the box even though I've got a non-static surface. And that's because I want to be able to put the graphics card hanging out there. Now this is a fairly popular board, nothing major to talk about. Okay, this board has got a HDMI and a DVI. Some boards do not have onboard GPU or video ports, so you will need a graphics card to test. Okay, having a quick browse, I can't actually see a dedicated power on self test button. Not a problem. Okay, let's move back to the side. Let's get the processor. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, fancy. I've not seen unboxing of this, so I don't even know what we're gonna get inside. Okay, now here's the processor and here's the cooler. Let's check the cooler out. I think this is the prism cooler or the rave cooler. I'm not even sure. Now the cooler, when you take it out, be careful. Most new coolers will come with pre-installed thermal paste, which is good enough for you to be able to use on your processor. You don't need to apply, except if you're going to make mistakes. They're meant to be much better than previous stock coolers anyway. And what are these? And in the little box, I think we've got the processor. Got a label. Oh, there is installation instructions. Cool. If you're a first time builder, and there are some instructions how to install the cooler. I don't think it needs a bracket on this one. Okay, these little bite boys are additional stuff for RGB lighting because yes, I'm pretty sure this is a prism. When that spins, if you connect it to your motherboard, that's got RGB options, that will work fine. But the cooler has got already a built-in uh, four pin connector, which we're gonna connect. So we're not gonna use RGB at this stage. We're just testing for post, okay? So where do you start? Usually the processor. And be very careful, the AMD processors have got what's called PGA, pin grid array, which means the pins are at the back of the processor. On the Intel motherboards, the pins are actually on the socket on the motherboard itself. So there is a way to install this with ZIF, it's called Zero Insertion Force. You might see there's a golden, if you don't, I'll do a picture later, there's a golden arrow, which you need to match with the arrow on here, on this corner, okay? If you don't see, don't worry, I'll give you a more detailed view later. So first of all, you need to open up the bracket, just push out and lift up, and it kind of releases the socket. Be very careful, I have dropped a couple of these, and uh, when you bend the pins, it could be bye-bye. This is the arrow, this is the arrow. I'm just gonna take it straight from the package by grabbing there. Be very careful, it could slip and place it, matching the arrow, 
and it is now in. You should not have to press any force, no press down, because if it didn't go in, it means there was bent pin already. You can kind of give it a little jiggle to see if it's well in place, and that should be fine. Press down and clip it in, and you're done. CPU installation done, and this is my dear friends, the most difficult part of building a PC. It wouldn't hurt at this stage if you've been manipulating the CPU to get your alcohol and give it a little bit of wipe, just to be extra cautious. You don't have to, but I can see a little debris on there. I just want to give it a little wipe and make sure it's dried. Try not to touch it with your thumbprints. Okay, next stop, like I mentioned, be careful you didn't smudge your thermal paste, otherwise you'll have to redo this whole thing. There are two brackets here and there are two clips on the side, which will clip down on the bracket. Since we need to also connect this 4-pin connector to the CPU fan here, Does it? okay? So this will go in this way, it slides in. So all you need to make sure for some kind of cable management, you could do it this way or that way if the cable is long enough in some cases. Just place it gently, you don't need to smudge it, try to align the clips, Gonna align the clip on one side, once it's in place. What you want to do is you want to clip the other side first, right? The one without the lever, push down until it clips in, and then do the other side. Again, push down once it clips, and then we need the lever. Push the lever until it's secured. Now you can jiggle your cooler if you want to test everything is fine, it should be okay. And now you need to also clip in your cable, but the cable might be a bit long, so it's okay to do a little tie around. So you shorten the cable length, just fine. and clip your cable in there and now we're done with the processor see that my friends again the second hardest part to do now i made a mistake with the ram sticks i did not know why i went with this color which was red i thought i would have some red theme i don't even know whether my gpu is going to be red it's not a major problem i'm not going to have this displayed anyway plus we can always use this in a different build i may change the ram in the future because i think i might upgrade i didn't mention it in our previous video ram slot that usually we're doing dual channel and there's usually a specific way to put this in now if you can see there is a configuration for the ram dim a1 dim a2 then dim b1 dim b2 and then there is a bracket with a two and a two so the second and fourth are what's to be configured first so we're going to install in the second and the fourth and that's the correct configuration for dual configuration if i'm not mistaken i will double check this afterwards but i think that's what it is and obviously there's a, a slot and a latch or whatever you call that okay all you need to make sure is you align the slot and then press down on each side until they both clip okay some motherboards have the clip only on one side which works the other one is fixed but this one has got both which is fine so that was the second uh, slot now we do the fourth slot open up the clip and press down and clip right and you're done but what we can do now we can start plugging in the 8 pin cpu power from our power supply so you look for your eps 8 pin connector this is the one the cpu match the ledge or the hatch whatever you call that and plug it in push it down some lower powered one will only have four pin as opposed to eight so you just need to use one side of it okay and then you also need to connect the motherboard with a 24 pin main connector again the clip there the latch there just clip down and we're done now that's all you need in terms of uh, powering the motherboard and the processor now you may see there is a dvi port here and hdmi port on the motherboard but this only will work if you have got an apu as a processor okay but if you've got a discrete uh, processor on its own with no apu plugging a video cable in there will not give you any signal so we're going to need to install our gpu oh nice um nitro sapphire eight gigabyte very heavy we've got all these covers there okay we've got one hdmi there which is fine this is the pci slot don't forget to keep touching the uh, device to discharge yourself okay you just need to align the slot here and this is why we use a board because you've got this edge which can uh, easily hang off not a problem and all you need to do is press down and click brilliant and that's done now if you come closer you see there's a six pin and an eight pin to connect it and uh, my power supply does have two six pins and uh, access to uh, additional for eight pins so we should be fine let's just connect one of it this way and the other one the other way it's all like lego guys it's, it's really simple once you know 
where things go, you can't really mess it up in terms of it will only orientate in one way. There we go, that's plugged in. Now let's not forget we're going to use our HDMI to DVI uh, cable. So we're going to plug that into the HDMI. Now we're almost done and you've got two options to test your motherboard. You can bridge the positive and negative power switch on or you can use a normal switch which is uh, which has got two pin although this one says reset sw it doesn't matter as long as you've got a switch to use because we're only going to connect the power switch anyway so refer to your manual so you got the top four pins and the bottom four pins and the one on the far was it right for you guys this one on the right here is a reserve it's not going to be used okay all we need to do is bridge the power switch positive negative all you need to do is to touch these two pins together it makes contact and it will turn on Okay, we can actually do this or you can use a switch and also the other thing, uh, very essential, the speaker cable, which is very handy. We're going to plug this in here, the JFP2. Okay, the orientation doesn't matter in this case. For now, I'm going to plug in a keyboard and a mouse as well. I will show you how we can do it without keyboard and mouse in a minute. But let me just show you how to bridge the connection. So you can just use like a screwdriver to just bridge the connection between positive and negative power switch on your pin there. There you go. And for the first boot, you're not going to hear any beep. Hopefully we'll get some post making sure your source is correctly um, selected and we should get a post and there we go a successful first post okay now i'm going to show you because we are going to go into a setting this is msi and uh, if you go to settings and go to boot and you can see here it says post beep it's currently disabled by default for your first boot so we're going to click on that and click on enabled and then press f10 on keyboard Say, save it, say yes, press enter. Now we're exiting and uh, this time because of the speaker cable, listen for it, you're going to hear a single beep, hopefully. There you go. And then you should see a display on the screen. Okay. So why is this without a doubt the best tutorial on how to build a PC step by step for beginners? It's not because of this video alone, and I'm not referring to the production value. It's because of the whole series. Firstly, it's the best step-by-step -step guide on PC building because I have already created 12 previous videos on YouTube in this one PC to all them all challenge series, where I cover everything you need to know before even getting to this point of assembling all the PC parts together. Secondly, it's also the best tutorial on PC building because of the subsequent video tutorials, which are still meant to come as I give you front seat on this exciting journey with all the support that I can give you as a beginner to confidently build your own PC. How many tech channels do you know that have dedicated an entire structured continuous series on a single topic and not only offer you an end user experience on one platform, but three platforms, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS and all the troubleshoot help and support you can get. Talking about troubleshoot, there is already an existing complete 10 parts troubleshoot a computer series up until Windows boot up. Go check it out. And thirdly, it's unique and special because of you, my dear name tags. You make this series so freaking awesome. I no longer feel alone and frustrated. I feel I have your support as much as you have mine for tech tutorials. Thanks to your contribution in the poll, in the comments, and I really mean it for just taking time out to watch my videos. Thank you so much. Okay, if you just join us now, it's time to vote. Now, I think what I should do next is to test a couple of operating systems, installing them on drives outside of the case before we put everything back in there. But I'm not entirely sure, it could depend on you. Tell me, do you want us to at least test a Windows drive? Which means I will also have to show you how to download and install a Windows installation disk with a USB and even a Linux one, so we could test them both outside of the case. Or do you just want to see us putting all these components into the case and then we can put the drives in there and start installing. So it's your choice. I don't mind either way, but at this stage, I probably will not do the Mac OS just yet. We're going to leave that for the last. We could do the Windows and the Linux. Go vote in the community tab and let me know. And we are doing daily uploads, if you remember. 
So if you've just joined us, welcome and go check out the rest of the series for the One PC Tool Them All Challenge series. As usual, leave me a like, leave me a comment and remember to subscribe and enable the bell notification icon. And please consider using my Amazon affiliate links. None of this is sponsored. Once again, thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. Remember to unleash your true potential. Until next time, peace out. Oh, <laughs>